Hi, Eska here, reporting from Calderola in the Marche region of Italy. Grand Fondo dei Sibillini starts with what's known as a French start, meaning there is a rolling start available from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. I was at the line at 8 o'clock, which was the main start. Somehow, I imagined uh, we'd set off in a convoy as a neutral start, and as usual, I plan to gradually work my way closer to the front before the actual start. But soon I found out that we are no longer one cohesive group. I bridged that gap and realized the main bunch was still further ahead and moving faster. They really started with a bang. Finally, caught and back to the travel mode. This is a very decent sized peloton. Some in this group are riding the medium route of 120k and others the long route of 150 kilometers. Yeah. Here we ride uh, with Philip who was doing the full distance which adds a 12 kilometer climb averaging 9% to the medium route. I had initially signed up for that too but at the last minute I switched to the medium route as climbing such an overcategory mountain in 35 degree heat would mean baking in a dual action oven of body heat and the sun. Filippo runs a bed and breakfast in Maserata and surely has great tips for both mountain and road cycling. The event page of uh, Grand Fondo dei Sibillini mentions a 12, uh, 24 person gradient wall for half a kilometer. So I switched to the lightest gear setup uh, 3430 as the shortest. As usual, the picture doesn't do justice to the steepness experienced on site, but you can certainly see the change in rider's pace right here. It's a steep slope, but I'd say we didn't hit over 20%. The average gradient was like 16-ish over a couple hundred meters. Of course, uphill climbs are followed by brisk descents. The shortest gear uh, 3430 was great for the climbs, but the longest 5012 was a bit lacking in some places. I think my stop speed, uh, speed was 72 km per hour. Too bad the latest Garmin Edge uh, firmware update is scrap. When my Edge Explorer 2 goes to sleep and then wakes up, it doesn't reconnect to sensors like HR belt and power pedals. So, heart rate, power and cadence stays in the dark. Shame on you Garmin for those several buggy software packages over the years. Anyways, overall the ride felt surprisingly good. So at this point with a veil of clouds in the sky, I thought I'd switch to the long route after all. In the distance you can see the mountains where the long route takes the riders. So the leaders were gone now, but I found a group of riders matching my pace and having good wipes. A bit further away the sun came out again and started to blaze as the sky cleared up. Again, Garmin didn't show any data from the sensors, but I felt my heart rate and uh, leg strength, uh, strength holding up well. So here all is good for now, but not for long. Because right after this uphill and then some flat, there is a downhill where my rear tire punctured. I had to stop naturally and my group moved on and my desire to continue the long route waned, especially now with the sun scorching. We are coming to Poggio and luckily there is the first rest stop. I grabbed some more water there and saw that a group was setting off. Here we are. So I rushed to join in. Well, I chased this group, but the chase ended soon at the winding downhill section, right here where the rider in white jersey appears. 
my rear tire exploded. It really popped loudly. And when the tire deflates instantly, it's hard to brake and steer downhill. Since it was the rear tire, luckily, not the front, I managed to have some control. And as you can see, the tire met its end spectacularly. Luckily, the crash test dummy was unharmed. Yeah, returning back to the Poggio rest stop, I had to use all the Italian words I know plus some of the Googles, as English doesn't get you far here in the countryside. But as a result, I was to wait for the broom wagon at the tail end of the long route to take me and my bike back to the start of Calderola. Talking about the tire blowout, we have to look for the best Big Bang theories. Although there weren't particularly long distance, it was very, very hot. And in the spots where the tire blew, I had been braking, which might have caused the carbon ring rim to overheat. But other than that, it was a great grand fondo. Lots of local clubs out in force enjoying the cycling. If I return another year, I'll definitely start at 7am. Thanks, bye.